we got to use technology, we got, got to get closer uh, to the patient. Uh, to that, I'll tell you a couple of things that I've noticed uh, in the healthcare delivery segment. One is point of care. Point of care diagnostics is the future. I mean, can you imagine that uh, a few decades back, there was only a reference lab. Everything else used to be collection centers. Today, it's the reverse. Today, you can take technology closer to the people. Your response times will be faster. Your diagnostics will aid in treatment uh, reaching the patient much faster than what it used to be earlier. So I can tell you, uh, we've been looking at a few uh, platforms ourselves on point of care. We've launched the Fax Presto. So uh, today you can do a CD4, an HIV test, much closer to the patient. Um, um, uh, the thermo piece, which is the, the you know, uh, in the previous models, the uh, reagents have to be stored in uh, temperature controlled environment. Uh, but the Presto or the, or the uh, point of care devices today allow you to store it at uh, room temperature, uh, maybe uh, at best air conditioned. So that's one piece that, that, that is a reality. I mean, we're working on various panels uh, to be, uh, and development of various diagnostic models closer to the patient. Uh, the other piece uh, is how do you deliver closer to the, uh, so how does the healthcare operator deliver closer to, uh, uh, to, the, to the patient again? Uh, one is that tier two, tier three cities of India are seeing a lot of uh, hospital development. There is a lot of infrastructure getting developed and uh, currently India stacks at about 1.5 million beds and uh, if my numbers go right, uh, we will be doubling that capacity uh, in about five to seven years from now. And that's a reality, that is going to happen. Uh, but still, how do you cater to talent? Uh, that's gonna be a big question. You can't produce as many doctors as the country needs. Uh, I've heard of this technology, I've seen, uh, in fact, seen it myself. That's called the electronic ICU. Uh, that's an ICU technology where uh, a, a, a command center uh, with the specialists seated uh, in, uh, let's say, in a deli can actually uh, control, uh, access and control uh, an ICU setting uh, remotely. Now, that's unbelievable technology. This is the power of technology. Today, technology, and they can, they can, they can uh, actually handle multiple centers, not one or two. Uh, the other piece that of course has been spoken about for a little while and I think should become a reality for India is uh, tele and internet medicine. We will have to go that domain. If, the, uh, if we cannot provide a physical doctor, a doctor in, 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 uh, uh, himself to the remote setting, we will have to go uh, uh, telemedicine way, the internet medicine way. I've heard, uh, I've heard many private uh, healthcare chiefs say it in the past that they're willing to support the government, they're willing to do a lot of uh, a uh, charity uh, for that matter, if we were, uh, uh, we could develop infrastructure around telemedicine and, and uh, internet medicine. Uh, we are in a 3D kind of a domain. Uh, we do uh, delivery, which is the drug delivery. We don't make drugs, we kind of help uh, deliver the drugs. Uh, the other business that we do essentially can be categorized into diagnostics. So we are into uh, diagnostics in a very big way. Uh, and the other piece that uh, a lot many consumers may not know about uh, uh, is the third piece, which is the discovery piece, where uh, we help uh, uh, the discovery of uh, various molecules through uh, something that we know as the cell sorters and cell analyzers. So that's the biosciences division of ours. So let me, Joe, try and uh, tell you in terms of how we add value uh, in the 3Ds that we kind of operate in. Uh, so the first piece where we talk about delivery, uh, essentially we, we make catheters, we make uh, syringes uh, in the delivery space uh, uh, and there's a lot which we do in terms of training people. Uh, training can be at uh, three, four different levels. Training can be at the hospital level, training can be at the lab level, uh, training can be at the, at the practice level. So when, when uh, you know, if you're able to develop nice practices at the, uh, at the level of students, You've done it right for the uh, for the society. Uh, the quality standards in each one of these smaller hospitals till they are ready to get to the NABH or the JCI standards. So we, uh, in partnership with NABH, uh, and uh, we in fact just signed up uh, the extension of that contract with uh, Dr. Kalra at uh, NABH the other day. Uh, we are trying to uh, help uh, sustain, uh, bring in, and maintain. Uh, uh, the quality standards of each hospital uh, and taking care of the infection control protocol piece. Uh, this uh, initiative of ours is called SAFI. Uh, what we really do here is that uh, we reach a hospital, we'll try and uh, elevate the standard of the hospital. This could be by 
giving them what the right uh, protocol is, by training their people around the protocol, and then uh, helping them watch through the, the, the enhancement process, because that's very, very important. Just, just giving the protocol does not probably elevate the protocol. You've got to help people uh, work on that. So that's, that's one uh, great piece that we're doing in terms of um, uh, enhancing the, the, the quality standards of our hospitals. Uh, on the the the, uh, the diagnostic side, uh, you would have heard of our product called the Vacutainers. These are essentially evacuated tubes, and probably, uh, uh, you know, uh, the oldest vacutainer, the, the the oldest tube being used in the country. And every modern lab today uh, uses a vacutainer. Uh, now, there is a lot that we need to do in terms of lobotomist development, and uh, BD is partnering with most of the laboratories in this country. Uh, uh, to be able to help them enhance the standard of lobotomists. Now the challenge there is to be able to reach every remote corner. Uh, physically again that's not possible. Therefore we are looking at various options of uh, using technology uh, to be able to train phlebotomists across the country even if they are in remote labs. Uh, so we are working with one of the technology providers today and uh, we are hopeful over the next year we should be able to develop a platform to be able to deliver remote training uh, to any part of the country. So we'll be training from our office and uh, you know the various labs across the country could log in and uh, kind of gain from our experience and expertise. Uh, some of the other things that I want to talk about on the, uh, on the third piece that I alluded to which is discovery. So we've done a type with the uh, Jamia Hamdard University wherein uh, we've placed, uh, which, is, which is actually called the BD Jamia Hamdard Facts Academy, which is the Flow Cytometry Academy. Now these are, these are expensive machines uh, and therefore uh, not everybody can have access to them easily and uh, our endeavor was to be able to develop, help people uh, learn the use of these machines and then uh, contribute to the society through development of uh, various um, uh, drugs and molecules and so on and so forth. Uh, so uh, through this unique tie-up uh, we have a state of art facility that we established uh, at the Jamia Hamdard University in Delhi and we invite a lot of people uh, to come uh, participate with us and learn the use of uh, cell sorters and uh, high-end cell analyzers uh, uh, in this uh, through this arrangement. So if I was to uh, kind of define innovation around patient safety, I actually break it up into three. One is adoption. Adoption is a very simple one. Copy what the others do better than you. And uh, it's, it's something that's always worked right. You don't have to invent the wheel each time. The second is development, very important. Everybody wants to touch and feel a new product that is coming in, a new development that's happening in terms of innovation. And the third piece is, uh, which again, uh, if we embark on that journey, we'd probably change the practice piece in India. And that's called the operational innovation. Uh, so there is one guy who's delivering care better than the other. How is it that we can emulate what he does? Uh, so let me try and, uh, uh, again, so let me touch upon the adoption topic first. Adoption is really three uh, pieces that we work around and BD plays a, a huge role. Um, in, in terms of adoption in the country. So we talk about awareness, we talk about training, we talk about uh, advocacy and policy. So uh, what is awareness? So uh, let me give you two, two examples around awareness uh, first. Uh, so we consider that India uh, uh, administers around seven, six to seven, anything close to, uh, so there is no count of it actually, but six, the estimates are six to seven billion injections are administered in this country. And if I tell you, you'll be surprised that uh, around 4 billion syringes and needles sold. So that means there is a repeat use of uh, every syringe that is sold in the market. Now, what does it do? Uh, why is it important for a common man to understand that his syringe should never have been used earlier? His needle should never have been used earlier. You've heard of this uh, uh, disease called hepatitis. Now, if, let me give you some estimated numbers around hepatitis. We consider HIV is a big number with 2.5 million, uh, but hepatitis is equally deadly and in counts is deadlier in India. It's an estimate again, but estimated numbers are 80 million uh, hepatitis infected cases in India. So that's around 7% of the population. Uh, now, we can go around numbers. We don't, we've not tested every, uh, every human in this country. Uh, I hope there is a way to do that, uh, to be able to uh, get a real check on these numbers, a real sense of these numbers and where the infection uh, rates are higher than the other places. So uh, we could avoid all of that from spreading further. If we were able to uh, restrict the use of uh, one syringe uh, for one injection, one needle for one injection. And that's where we have a product which is called reuse prevention. 
so people do believe that uh, it must be a very expensive technology, which it is not. It is not. Reuse prevention today uh, is, not, is not at all expensive. It's just about awareness. If people were aware that a product like that is av uh, available and they insist on usage, both from a delivery point of view and also for somebody who's taking the injection, uh, the reuse prevention can actually uh, help at least control infections like hepatitis and so on and so forth. Let so what is the training piece? Now, uh, I spoke to you a little while earlier on, uh, you know, practices in one hospital being better than the other. Now, how is it that you can go and replicate those practices? One is uh, talent moving from one place to the other. The other is institutions like ours. Now, we work with all of them. We have access to what they do. Uh, we work on the infection control side with many hospitals. And that's where we gather a lot of information around them. Uh, and we are a repository of sorts, which can actually go back to another hospital and deliver what our best practice is. Uh, we've, de we've developed something which we call the signature solutions. Uh, and uh, our signature solutions is all about learning from one hospital and delivering to the another, to another hospital. Uh, we've always promoted the concept with our, uh, with our consumers, with our customers, which is essentially the leading hospitals and, uh, and the laboratories. Uh, wherein we say, if you have a problem around anything, consult us, we'll be able to provide you a solution because we know what the others do and how is it that they're dealing with this problem. Because problems in every, in every setting are the same. Uh, the third piece that, uh, 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 you know, and, and uh, in fact, uh, a little more to this one. So what we really say, we seek, we solve, we sustain, and we share. And this is the, the entire motto around uh, signature solutions. The third piece that probably I can touch upon is advocacy and policy, which I alluded to earlier, uh, is SAFI. So SAFI is one of the advocacy pieces, the policy pieces that I spoke about. And I, uh, so we, we are in tie up with, we've done a tie up with uh, NABH, wherein we've got the extension now. Again, we go to the smaller hospitals, which currently cannot reach to the levels of JCI and NABH, and try and enhance the quality standards, uh, help them work on the infection control piece in their hospital and try and uh, elevate the standard of delivery. You've heard of this uh, piece called obstructed labor. And if I was to tell you this problem, this problem is huge. 10 million women uh, uh, globally actually go through the, the obstructed labor piece during the process of delivery. And you can well understand that uh, in India, these numbers will be high because of our resource setting and plus uh, uh, you know, the, the number of childbirths happening in our country. 2.6 million stillbirths happen every year. 260,000 women, they died during the process of childbirth. And uh, if this wasn't worse, the worst is that 96% of them happen in developing nations. Now, it is one of the most common processes, procedures that we, we, we've, uh, we hear in our daily life. I mean, childbirth is something which is extremely common. We still continue to use the age-old methodology of forceps. And uh, forceps has uh, a lot of disadvantages. Um, uh, the other, the other uh, element, the other uh, device that is used currently is a vacuum uh, for, a, for an obstructed labor. And that too, unless utilized, unless used by uh, somebody who's an expert at that, can have adverse consequences. So this is where a lot of development uh, is being done uh, in BD. Uh, we've, uh, we've already announced a device that we will come out with. We are currently doing clinical trials around it in various countries. And uh, this is called the Odon device. It's a birthing device. And I wish I could show you a video around it at this point in time. Maybe I'll share it uh, with you all at a later stage. It'll make the process extremely simple, extremely safe. And the numbers that uh, I spoke about, we'll be able to uh, actually help reduce uh, the mortality around it, uh, bring in a lot of safety around the process of uh, labor. And this will be able to eradicate a lot of risk that currently exists around obstructed labor. So uh, we're looking forward to it, and uh, we hope that uh, when we come out with the product, we're able to change the game uh, significantly. So the need of the R, the unmet need here that I'm alluding to is, uh, is, a, is a drug transfer device. So when you kind of formulate uh, these drugs, or these formulations happen in a, in a healthcare setting. Uh, we need to avoid contamination with the external environment. We need to ensure that uh, there are no hazardous gases that are moving out and uh, infecting the, the, the healthcare professional. So soon you will see BD coming out in India with something called a, a, a product that we, we call the Facile. Uh, it will be the BD Facile. Uh, it will help actually. Uh, it's a drug transfer device which will help and ensure 
that uh, there is no contamination of the external environment uh, and vice versa and the healthcare professional is absolutely safe. And the last piece that I want to uh, talk about is probably the most important piece Joe because uh, we could strategize uh, till cows come home, we could keep thinking but unless a perfect execution happens, I don't think we'll get it right. And in our country execution happens to be the key. Uh, so the two things that probably I can share with you here is uh, one is I've always believed that uh, in our country where 70% of delivery happens in the private sector and needless to say when you and I actually uh, move out um, to kind of get our relatives uh, seen in a hospital, we always prefer the private setting. Uh, I won't say that uh, we don't go to some of these institutions which are government institutions but they are they're not as many as you would uh, desire them to be. Uh, I think India is a perfect case where we should look at a tri-party kind of arrangement. Uh, historically that's been called the public-private partnership and uh, I'd say there is a huge case, a huge need in India uh, to walk that path. Uh, when I say a tri-party kind of an arrangement, for instance, uh, you could look at a, uh, a device manufacturer, you could look at a healthcare service uh, or a delivery platform, uh, could be a laboratory, could be a hospital, depending on what the need of the hour is, and the government partnering together. So uh, if I was to do this, uh, trust me, I've heard uh, many healthcare providers say this to me, I've heard uh, laboratories say this to me, I've heard that let's all partner together and deliver what the need of the hour for the country is. And uh, the government could be the pair uh, in this scenario. They could, instead of developing an infrastructure which is going to take time uh, and then ensure delivery, they could use the infrastructure which is currently available with the private operators uh, and the delivery and the device manufacturers uh, to be able to deliver the positive outcomes. So I think it's, it's just the innovation piece which is required there and it's a simple innovation to make. Uh, one of the other piece that I must allude to uh, during our conversation is the Make in India piece. So I was there the other day when Prime Minister Modi was actually talking about Make in India. And uh, trust me, uh, what we all came out with was a, uh, was a huge degree of enthusiasm. And uh, if we are able to walk that path, India would be a changed country uh, sooner than we expect it to be. Uh, uh, we all understand that the demographic dividend uh, will actually uh, play a huge role in the development of this country and uh, it's no different for healthcare. Uh, uh, in fact, in healthcare, talent is a bigger problem uh, and we need to develop talent. And if we are able to walk that path, we'll be able to develop more nurses, uh, uh, more phlebotomists, uh, a higher trained and skilled manpower uh, in our country to be able to deliver healthcare in the remotest corners of the country.